And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a little game called Smoothies. Smoothies is a game in the genre which we call Roll and Write, where you roll dice and mark things off. And most people know this genre from the game Yahtzee. I was pretty excited about Smoothies because I like the concept of the game, making smoothies, which, heads up, isn't in the game at all. Has nothing to do with smoothies, but whatever. And I like the 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 dice and that you're rolling dice into a box. Now, most of these games have a thing where you roll dice and then mark stuff off in a sheet. What's new and different about this one? Let's find out. In this game, each player is going to get a score sheet. And what you're going to be doing over the course of this game is you're going to be crossing off different spots here. We have different colors, which correspond to the seven different colored dice, and then different numbers that are here. And sometimes when you cross off different things, you'll get a bonus. Like if you cross off a star, you can also cross off a space that's adjacent to that star. If you cross off uh, some of these special abilities, you'll get them down here. You'll put a single line through them. So, for example, this lets you reroll a die. This lets you take an extra die. This lets you change a die to another color. You already have one of each of those abilities. You would put another cross through to show that you've used it. So you put a single line through it like that. When it's your turn, players will take turns. You take the dice, and you're going to roll them like that. You're going to have the two sides of the boxes here. You're going to roll them so that some of the dice land in some and some of the dice land in the other. There has to be at least two dice in one of them. At that point, the active player, the person who rolled the die, is going to pick one of the two. So let's say I picked the round blender here. The first thing I'll do is at the bottom of my sheet here, I'm going to cross off on the round blend at four, one, two, three, four, because that's how many dice that are there. You keep going, and if you completely go up to the end of one, you can't pick that blender anymore. Although, if I, let's say I'm down here at this line, and I pick five dice from one, I can, I'll just fill out these last two. Notice if you cross off the last two in each of these, you're going to lose points at the end of the game. And when someone has crossed off both of them in both columns, in that column here, in the black box, that will trigger the end of the game. And so once I've done that, I can then pick and add up any number of dice. In this case, I've rolled pretty low, so I'll probably pick all of them. I'll add these together, which is a total of nine. And then in my nine column here, I will cross off orange, blue, pink, and red, the boxes. So I get to cross off four boxes. If for some reason I wanted a different number, maybe I would take, actually, I might seriously take this, which is seven. And then in a seven column, I would cross off the red, the orange, and the pink. And you notice the seven has a black box around it. Whenever you do something in the seven, you can cross off one box anywhere you want. If you do something in the 14, you can cross off two boxes anywhere you want. Meanwhile, everybody else can pick a single die from this column, so from the other box that I didn't pick. So someone else might pick the blue one, the purple one, which they're not going to do because there is no one column. So everyone's going to be picking the yellow four and crossing off the four, yellow four in their column. So everyone gets one die from the box that I didn't use. And that's it, you're just gonna keep going back and forth, active players rolling, until like I said, one person fills in both boxes here, the number of dice. When that happens, you will do scoring. Now, the way that scoring is gonna work, first of all, if you fill in a complete column, you're gonna get five points. If you have a complete column that has nothing in it, you will lose two points. So you'll keep track of those here. You can also lose points if you roll too many dice in one thing on this side. Over here, you're gonna score points for each of your rows. That number is gonna be determined by the number of players in the game. So it's gonna be either six, seven, or eight. What I mean by is you need to have that many boxes. So let's say the minimum number is seven, and I filled in eight boxes, I will then score eight points. If the minimum number is seven, and I put in five, I have five yellow boxes filled in, I get nothing. So each row you will score points for if you filled in a minimum number of boxes. Also, whoever fills in the most in the yellow and the orange row will get an additional three points, which is noted there. You add those points here, negative points here, points from complete columns here, add them together, and whoever has the most points 
is the winner of the game. As with most of these games, there's not a lot of components. There's the dice, which are fine, although if you're colorblind, you might have problems between, you know, the colors do matter in this game. The sheets have a lot of information on them. I think they're a little small myself. They need to be to fit in the box. The box is part of the game, although I will tell you that it's weird because the lid is slightly different than this. It's gonna, it's, it's, it actually isn't that hard to drop these in here, and yet in every game of this I played, people have kind of always had dice pop out. And of course, I'm not having that happen as I'm showing you on camera here, because I've had a lot of practice with this. But it seems like every time we played, some dice came out and people had to re-roll. The game also comes with four pencils, so yay. At the beginning here, I mentioned, hey, what's new and different about this game? Unfortunately, the answer is nothing, except for maybe rolling the dice into the box, I guess, and you're seeing which ones. But there's a lot of problems with this game. This game is clearly, whoever played this game clearly played, that's pretty clever, or twice as clever, one of those games, because this takes that same thing, where one person rolls a dice, they will use some of the dice, and everyone else picks a leftover die. However, unfortunately, this game doesn't feel very clever. You'll notice in the example I showed there that when you I rolled the dice, the other two dice were ones, and so everyone else had only one option, which was to take the yellow four, in which case they may have already crossed off the yellow four. Now, yes, as the game goes by, you might get some plus ones, so you could use one of those ones and turn it into a two, but I'll tell you, when you're not the active player, it's just not that interesting. You're, usually the active player is going to pick the bigger amount of dice. Why wouldn't you? Taking the smaller amount of dice means they're gonna be stuck in the, in the one side of the board and you're trying to fill in those bigger numbers. The only way you can do the bigger number is on your turn. That said, Yes, there's a little bit of re-rolling possible, there's a little bit of special abilities you have, but for the most part, the game felt very static. I rolled and I'd say, okay, these are the numbers I can make, I guess I'll cross these off. Also, it doesn't feel like the strategy is that balanced. Getting the yellow row and the orange row gives you bonus points. It also, you know, if you're trying to get those bonus points, you know, you're going to get the points for filling in that row anyway. So let's say the minimum number for yellow is seven in your game. So I fill in eight and I get the most. That's eight plus three, it's 11 points. Another person who might be going for columns would have to get three columns to get more than me and also make sure that they didn't get any negative columns. If you're also going for one row, you're canceling out that negative column bonus. So what else is there besides the columns and the rows? And the answer is nothing. This game just felt like a very much lesser version of That's Pretty Clever. It also feels like a lesser version of Roll and Write. It feels kind of lazy, honestly. You roll dice, you grab some, you then check a bunch in the round or the square blender. And what this game seems to have is more complexity than choices. That's always a problem for this kind of game. These kind of games should be simple for the most part. There's some fairly complex ones. If they are complex, then the game better bring in some depth of things that are going on, and this does not have it. So unfortunately, I like the smoothie idea. I like the idea of rolling dice into boxes. At the end of the day, though, this game feels derivative and boring. Dice Tower of Judgment? Eh, boring. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.